Greetings, friends. Gemini, greetings to all of us at this festival of humanity, the festival of Christ. Today we meet in the first day of distribution to meditate, to bring our focus to the common good, invoking the vision of the unfolding plan and asking for the hierarchical guidance. Through the pre preparatory work um, of uh, the group of guardians of the purpose of our project, the topic was selected uh, through sharing and meditation for the Gemini uh, cycle of our work. Right relationships, harmonizing opposites in a multidimensional world. This topic is related to one of three themes that we follow throughout the year. And those three themes uh, related to each of the crosses. Uh, first theme, new leadership, cleaning the house of religion and politics. Second theme related to the fixed cross signs, introducing the principle of sharing into all fields of human endeavors. And the third theme related to the signs of mutable cross harmonizations and right relationships in all fields of human endeavors. And that's where we are now with the sun moving through the sign of Gemini. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, as always, we start by sounding the statement of purpose and i invite brigitte to sound the statement on our behalf our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good freedom and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and cherish diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an asramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Birgitta. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and read our seed thoughts that were gathered uh, from the first quarter moon meeting in this cycle of Gemini. Number one, group endeavors, love and goodwill. Number two, let humanity reveal the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Third seed thought, expanding the intuitive perception of the heart.
Number four, finding not just the point of balance in relationships, but a point of resins. Number five, deep listening. Number six, a group experience is becoming more and more powerful and thus our service more and more effective. Number seven, from psychic to intuitive interconnectedness, standing in the center of the spiritual triad. Number eight, will to love, to empower the group intuition and seed the capacity to receive the impulse of the 2025. Number nine, through the desire to hear, egoism is broken down and digested through the heart and becomes the will to listen, awakening the true encounter with our fellow men. And the final seed thought, the world group recognizes and steps into right position of balance as a neutral point for pairs of opposites within humanity, as a radiating positive point towards humanity, and as a negative receptive point towards the will of God. And now we will move into our meditation. So over to you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Dear friends, uh, it's such grace to come together to talk about right relationship and harmonizing opposites on this day, the day following the full moon. We stand together in the benefit of the energies of the Gemini full moon. It is what Gemini is known for, harmony, right relations, and synthesis. So let's take a breath together. We breathe as a world serving group sense our oneness. Sense the heart. Feel into our group love. and hold our group tension. We stood with the Christ at the time of the full moon. 
let us be with him again. We stand in full presence. Feel love. Be love. Radiate love. Quote, because the ray of love wisdom, the second ray, pours through Gemini, it becomes apparent how true is the occult teaching that love underlies the entire universe. This underlying love of deity reaches our solar system primarily through Gemini, esoteric astrology. We stood in Gemini's downpour. We were filled. We recollect, recollect. We remember, remember. Breathe. We are told that Gemini, as you may now begin to grasp, is related to the etheric body. It is the custodian of conditioning energy and the intermediary as far as basic essentials are concerned between the soul and body. It is the glue of synthesis. This is also where the new group of world servers stand as the intermediary between hierarchy and humanity, between the soul and the body. The glue of synthesis. As we breathe, let us take our place. In the Ajna Center, as the intermediary and know that we are supported by Gemini. Feel our elder brother.
and let us feel our etheric oneness as a group. And as a group with other groups. And now with the new group of world servers. We are told that this sign is sometimes called the constellation of the resolution of duality into fluid synthesis, governing as it does all pairs of opposites in the zodiac. It preserves the magnetic interplay between them, keeps them fluid in their relation in order to eventually facilitate the transmutation into unity. This is a key for us. Visualize it, Gemini, as a support as we work to harmonize right relations. Visualize it resolving duality into synthesis. Let us be open to this energy. Together we invoke establishing our right relationship. Mercury, the orthodox ruler of Gemini, quote, as the messenger of the God or the divine intermediary, carries messages between the poles with speed and light. In this most potent and important planet, the idea of duality is again to be found, enhancing and enhanced between the higher and the lower, between the human self and other, between lower and higher mind, between soul and personality, relating soul to spirit, and finally, revealing the spiritual triad related to the soul. So let us invoke Mercury to support us as we direct this energy between the human self and other. between higher and lower mind. Between soul and personality. In people's 
groups, and nations. Relating soul to spirit. And now, revealing the spiritual triad related to soul. Here we stand. Let us now open the mental plane to higher mind, to the plane of intuition. We move there with the support of Mercury. We breathe. It is in thought forms that are specifically rated, related to our ideas that we seek solution. and to help us know the ideas of the plan. Mercury is the vehicle of the fourth ray, harmony through conflict, which is also the ray of humanity. Let us invoke both Mercury and Gemini to raise the consciousness of humanity to support the common good. Gemini is found on the mutable cross. In regards to its work there, we read, quote, this is the force which produces the changes needed for the evolution of Christ consciousness. Let us distribute this energy to the center which we call the race of men. the full moon of Gemini, the festival of Christ. In our mission statement, we declare that our work is to support the reappearance of the Christ. Let us hold that divine intention. So we now turn to our topic, right relationships, 
harmonizing opposites in a multidimensional world. Standing in the plane of intuition, let us ponder the following questions. Feel free to jot down any impressions or thoughts that come to mind if you find this useful. Later, we will share our reflections. So let us take a breath. Uh, question number one. As part of the new group of world servers, what relationships do we need to forge to harmonize opposites? Take a few minutes to ponder. And now our second question. As world servers standing in the Ajna Center between the subtle and the manifest world, how do we synthesize these two?
Our third question, how can we bring about harmony between opposing perspectives and or forces? And our final question, what does right relations in a multidimensional world look like? And what is needed to support the return of the Christ?
So will you be leading us in sharing, Alexander, or would you like me to do that? We'll go ahead and uh, do our bridge for closure first, Judy. Sure, thank you. I can do that or you can do that. No, go right ahead, Tracy. Thank you. It's time now to return from the depths of our pondering. As we draw together the impressions from our contemplation, let us allow them to take form. They may come to us as words, pictures, symbols, sound, or even colors. Drawing our impressions together, let us rest in silence for just one more moment. We see our impressions flowing together into the group heart, filling our chalice and vitalizing it with radiant light, enhancing its beauty and the wisdom of its tone. Together we direct this, this light upward to the hierarchy and await their blessings upon it. And now realizing our invocation today, we witness its radiance pouring downward from our chalice into the lower planes, stimulating all receptive hearts and minds. And in conclusion, let us close this work today in our meditation as we identify with the soul in all and apply our efforts to be in accordance with divine will. We now send forth the results of our efforts through love and the energy of our group work to help our earth in all its diversity and ultimate unity through its transformational journey into the sacred. We do this through focused direction of energy from our Ajna center of the group, sending the light outward to higher beings, to other spiritual groups, to the soul of humanity, and to all sentient beings as we assist the forces of light. And grounding this, invocation today, we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. And from the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh. Oh.
We will start now with our sharing. And I'd like to note that the Community Impressions Board is now available on the homepage of the 2025initiative.org website. So you can always go there to add your impressions and uh, whatever you're receiving over the next few weeks as we prepare um, the evocation at the time of the new moon. So over to you, Alexander and uh, Brigitte for beginning the sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Judy. The link to the Community Impressions Board is also available now in the chat. It's a continuous um, selection of our impressions with, from all the previous cycles. And so there you can find questions that uh, Judy offered us today for reflection. And we'll hold these questions, as Tracy said, for the next couple of, uh, couple of weeks. We'll have our quarter moon meeting where we will additionally we'll have time to share our impressions. And now we have uh, some time to share any impressions that came and we received in our group chalice. Um, now on the screen, you can see all the questions which can guide our sharing. And uh, floor is open when you're ready, please unmute yourself and that can continue holding this meditative attitude, even when we listen to each other, in order to recognize through resonance, the ideas that uh, keep coming into our group channels. This is Lynn. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I would like to start today, if I might. Um, I have a bit of a story uh, that is um, actually, it's something that's going on right now. Um, I think we're all sensing, well, there's been a lot of change, but sensing a real shift, a strong shift at the moment. And I've seen it reflected in a beautiful way, um, not only as Helen spoke of last time in the gardens with all the colors and the, the strength of the life of the plants, but also um, um, here at home, I've uh, witnessed uh, a change in nature. Um, um, we've, for years, we've um, um, just watched birds and watched a lot of things going on in nature. Um, we're gardeners. We've uh, worked with, with uh, I've tried to work with the um, nature beings and devas as much as possible. But anyway, what's happened, what's happening now is something different for, for me. Um, for years, we've, as we've watched the birds, they try to build nests in the arbor behind us, um, behind our house where, um, a lot of uh, clematis is growing, the native clematis, which gets really full. And the birds seem to think that that is going to be a wonderful spot to build a nest and raise a family, but it has never worked. Um, the squirrels get to the nests and various things happen. But this year, right in the front of our house, um, we've had two successful nests already. Um, which is a major change, I think, reflecting the positive changes around us, the cooperation. Um, the first nest was, um, I believe, house wrens, and they built a nest in our garage. Um, there's a little gap in one corner, and they flew, the little tiny birds flew into the garage through the gap under the door, and um, 
built a nest on a shelf inside our garage, which means our neighboring cat couldn't get to it. Uh, and even though my husband and son spend time out there, and sometimes the garage door is open, but when it's not, the wrens were still going in and out, raising three, three little ones that we watched fledge. And the whole thing was very successful for the first time. And then we noticed a couple of weeks ago that some robins had built a nest right over our front sidewalk, um, probably 10 feet from our front door uh, in a lilac bush, tree actually. And they have been successful in raising, we can't see because of the leaves how many, but we can see the movement and we see the parents bringing the food in and out um, but that there are at least two babies in there. I'm just about ready to fledge right now. Um, there was only one threat to them, and that was from um, a group of starlings that came through. And they were able to uh, ward off the starlings. And also, I went to the front door, and every time a starling came too close for about an hour, I banged the door or something, which didn't seem to bother the robins at all, but would move the starlings away. And uh, so in some sort of unique cooperation, we've had two successful bird's nests, and which I'm, as you can tell, I'm totally, totally delighted about. Um, I believe uh, it's as above, so below, and uh, some aspect of synthesis, I think you spoke to it at one time, more specifically, Alexander. Um, that this is all working together right now in a sort of more um, concrete, loving harmony that's actually manifesting so strongly compared to what was normal before. Um, also, also, I think um, my role sometimes is just to be the one who will state the simply obvious <laughs> that yet is good to keep in perspective when we deal with our more, uh, as we get more specific as we go on in our discussions. And that is just that um, I think the key that we would all agree on is living as much in the soul solves all the problems for everyone right now in this, this um, aspect of humanity's evolution. Um, what relationships do we need to forge to harmonize opposites? As long as we live in soul, um, that's happening automatically. Um, as we stand as the Ajna center between the subtle and manifest worlds and synthesize the two, um, we're standing in soul, I think, and it automatically flows between the uh, the, the middle, the synthesis of si the opposite signs, all of that sort of thing. As we're standing in soul, um, open to monad and so forth, and and open to the um, to the um, hierarchy and all, um, we are we are automatically doing that. Um, we are harmonizing between opposing perspectives um, as we live in soul. Um, I think there's even a way to, uh, um, to become more and more aware of our oneness as we relate to others and as we relate opposites. Um, there's a consciousness living in that consciousness of oneness as experientially as possible uh, makes a huge difference. Um, when I try to remember that, sometimes I say something very simple that I, my main spiritual teacher from years ago taught me. And that was just saying um, the mantra, love to all beings, north, south, east, and west, above, below, without, within, divine love to all beings. And it seems to um, change the environment you're standing in as you say that even within your heart. I think that radiating love and oneness, um, that is the, the uh, work of the soul. 
that sense, radiating that sense of oneness. I think that's what I, all I have to say right now. Um, except that that um, we start with the simple, and then usually I think in our our group we often um, many of you who are more more expressive than me um, take us into uh, more and more lovely perceptive detail and insight. And I look forward to hearing from everyone. Thank you. Um, it's interesting to me thank you Lynn it's um uh, I also notice that the um smaller worlds or the actually larger worlds but different kingdoms they are I, I notice it's since COVID, very much so. I feel like when humanity slowed down a bit and connection became more obvious, I noticed that the birds and uh, the animals, they are in plants, hard to say about minerals, but I would say that, you know, all of those kingdoms, they are receiving more from humanity. And that's how I see the new kind of working is because this shared energy and shared consciousness allows us to bring this harmonizing principle and really share it with one another. So basically doing what we need to do in this relationship is bringing the higher into the lower. Just the, uh, the comment on the second question is just how to synthesize. Synthesize is make one out of many. And uh, us being in this world, yet not out of this world, allows those two worlds to synthesize and become one. And I believe this uh, energy is as practical as it, as it gets. And it's as simple as it gets. It is the second ray in distribution from a different point. Gemini. Yet through Christ and his intention and his work and the ashrams and um, disciples and people goodwill all this highest level gets distributed and um, it is really powerful that centered inten intentional love from one point of the uh, range from the spiritual world into manifested world, the matter, raising the vibration and the limits. Thank you.
Uh, hi, uh, Jill here. Um, I was, I've just jotted a few things down and the opposites I've been thinking about were male, female, old, young, human kingdom, animal kingdom, democracy, autocracy. And as Lynn said, I think um, the soul consciousness will deal with everything. And it also occurred to me that we all read the blue books and the master's words. And if we just take a leaf out of their book and see how they work together, they don't criticize, they don't raise conflict, they just work through love, then we can um, basically right all our wrongs. Thanks. Hello, Kiki here. I was sort of thinking, as Jillian was, well, and the others too, that Jill boiled it down to love, which is, I always do too, but what was coming was, with the first one, was sort of, you had to bend over backwards, I kept hearing. <laughs> and so it's compromise. And then for synthesizing the two, it was, clarity and understanding. Um, and all the, as it went on, it was listen, consideration, compromise. Uh, yes, how did the masters do it by love? And so how do we love? We have to do all these things. We have to try to listen to the other and see where they're coming from, how they live. We have to understand them. They have to understand us so we can try to make a decent living for everybody. Um, what I also thought of was in my, in my husband was in the Navy, so we did all that life for 20 years or so. And there were lots of picnics. So everyone from the ship, all hands, uh, got together at picnics. I mean, any country at festival, it's the same thing. And you're, you're all together, you're having a good time, you're working from the heart, there's food, there's good fellowship, and well, one seems that, seems that way all the time, maybe there are rows in the back, I don't know, but that was just a little image, like Lynn's birds and nature, the picnic and working together with others. So that's it, thank you. Do you hear me? Oh, yes, Anita, we can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for helping me uh, by that. Um, I um, was thinking about, uh, I totally agree what uh, uh, you all have said. So I don't uh, um, uh, want to uh, say it all over, but uh, uh, on the fourth question, uh, I thought what we need to eat and what how we can participate in in in, in uh, uh, the return of the Christ is by healing the planes and subplanes. Uh, why uh, um, I'm with a group of Tom Carney and, and Barbara Wolf and and uh, others Kiki is also uh, there and we are healing this the planes and the subplanes uh, every uh, new moon 
and um, I read somewhere, uh, I think it was in the externalizing of the hierarchy, that the masters and, and the Christ, uh, if they have to come to the uh, physical plane and the other planes, it is for them like walking in mud, because uh, the 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 density the um, um, the density uh, what, what is the word um, it it is to, so um, um, dense it is so <laughs> pardon I think you're looking for density yes density <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it, 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 all, all the the planes are, are very uh, the density is, is density. Uh, so that is uh, one way, and also uh, what you all uh, said, and then about the right relations in a multi multi uh, dimensional world. I think that is why we are trying to adjust uh, about the internet. We are all um, trying to um, understand that you can't just say anything on the internet. You have to uh, think as at the person uh, you're talking with or, or writing with as um, a real person and not someone you can say anything to and uh, not someone someone you can cheat on. Um, so you have to um, um, take care of those uh, of us who are not so familiar with the internet and um and under understand that uh, um it is difficult to um understand uh, the etheric world um and the internet where uh, you can say just anything and and cheat others uh, for instance, uh, we are having a, an election uh, for uh, the uh, European uh, Union um, in a couple of weeks, and some parties have uh, have made some commercials uh, making fun of of uh, the the um opportunities uh, as a deep fake and uh, a, a, an election questionnaire is where you just uh, 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 no matter what you uh, uh, say you get one party <laughs> and and that's not fair and and uh, those who are um, not so familiar with the internet, uh, um, um, they don't see it. If uh, the youngs uh, um, play tricks like that, so I think that's someone so something we we have to learn. Uh, um when we get more and more accustomed to the multi multi uh, dimensional world so that's all thank you Hello, this is Judy. <clears throat> In thinking about these questions um, and relationship, uh, I often think of the even I'm crossed. So relationships need to, to be developed um, 
in the world in which we live in its broadest sense, uh, with the groups that we're involved with, with additional groups, with all groups until that oneness is established, we also need to uh, invoke the higher. Uh, any invocation is based on relationship. So basically we have to um, stand in a place where we are able to develop relationships on multi-levels. Um, when I thought of harmonizing opposites, I thought that it's probably important to see the, the meaning behind um, the issue that might be taking place or the opposites that are happening. Uh, if we can stand um, at that plane of soul or higher as uh, observers, uh, we can better see what some of the difficulties are. I know when um, I work to invoke the avatar of synthesis or any synthesizing energy, uh, it's to have just a clear perception of what the issues are and what does the opposite look like, uh, and then to try to bring that through. On a more personal level, I think even groups getting together and understanding their own oneness uh, and forging those relationships uh, expand tremendously the ability to invoke. Um, the second question, the first thing that came to my mind, I wrote down the great invocation. How do we synthesize the subtle world and the uh, world in which we live? And we have that skill and we know that invocation and we also know its power. And so me that for me, that was the first uh, thing I put down. Um, sometimes when um, I'm in my group that works with the sustainable development goals, I look at an, a goal like no poverty and what would it take for there to be no poverty, for humanity to understand its part in divinity. And so I'm really not supporting no poverty per se, but supporting humanity to understand its right relationship so that no poverty can occur. So again, trying to stand uh, in a different place and reflect. Uh, identification is another way uh, to identify with um, both worlds, to understand the synthesis between the two within our own bodies, our own self, uh, and then we can bring it out into the world. Um, the last question, when I looked at what 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 do we want the world to look like? Um, what would it look like if in fact there was a right relationship? Um, what would it look like between nations? What would it look like between groups? What would it look like between people and their governments? What would it look like between uh, the different kingdoms, the animal kingdom and the uh, human kingdom and so on. And certainly we can say love, but how does that play out? And I think it's by basically recognizing ourselves in the other, um, moving into the idea of right sharing. I had read in one of the books, and I was surprised at this fact that the Christ will come when the bulk of humanity has gone through the first initiation, or, at, and I won't say the bulk, a large percentage so that uh, when Christ returned, there is lighted substance uh, through which he can um, then work and support. So there's, there's two conflicting things. One says that the world has to be uh, in total chaos, and then the next thing says that there has to be a, a group, uh, if you will, that can hold the impulse that will be brought through. And so I see that uh, basically as our responsibility to be that group and to expand that group by uh, supporting uh, humanity uh, in its evolution and consciousness. 
So those are some of my thinking uh, with some of these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Judy, for a, a deep uh, meditation. Um, the questions uh, were very good, and um, I'll share a few thoughts on what came to me um, as they were being read. Um, the first one as part of the new group of world servers. Um, the relationships, what do we need to forge to harmonize opposites? Um, what relationships do we need to forge to be in harmony? I think the first thing that came to me was the relationship between self and higher self, um, the shadow aspects and those types of things that need to really um, be brought into the light so that we can resolve them and integrate them and because uh, the whole point is becoming the soul, both within the inner worlds and the outer worlds. And I think that that goes with shadow aspects of, of everything, um, groups, just nature itself, everything, which has the shadow aspects. Um, thought it was interesting what Lynn brought up about nature. I, I've been witnessing some really, I've fed the animals for a very long time in my backyard and usually they chase each other and fight each other for the peanuts and that and I have a little tray on the ground and I noticed the other day I couldn't get to my phone quick enough to take a picture but the chipmunk this is a small little baking tray that I set out with peanuts on it at that table I'm going to call it a table it was being shared at the exact same time in peace and harmony with a rabbit, a squirrel, a chipmunk, and a couple of birds. And they all were around that and, and eating at the same time. So I think that's showing that there are some harmonies and harmonization as, as Lynn was bringing up also. And I think the other relationships that I looked at for forging harmony um, just within ourself, within the group, group astral body, self astral body, mental body, physical etheric bodies, we have to harmonize um, those relationships within ourselves and within groups as it expands outward, like a, a circle or a target that expands outward and and radiates. And, and as world servers for the second question, um, you know, standing in the Ajna Center between the subtle and manifest world. How do we synthesize the two? What immediately came to me was by living in both worlds more and becoming aware, again, being observer, which I think was already brought up and blending the two. Um, how can we bring harmony for the third question? Um, discrimination, uh, we can discard that which is not real from the real learning what is real and what isn't real because real itself will begin to blend and harmonize naturally if we can know what's real and what isn't i think harmony automatically and balance because it's nature it takes its course naturally um and what does the right relations in a multi-dimensional world look like what do we need um to do to support bringing in the Christ. Um, I think it's knowing who we truly are and that we're multidimensional beings and we have to live as such. So knowing our astral and mental and physical etheric and, and what needs to be worked on, what needs harm, you know, if we know who we are, then we can actually work on fixing or resolving or transforming, transmuting. So thank you. I know. Long-winded here.
Thank you, everybody. Maria Cristina here. Just would share a sentence written during the time of the full moon yesterday on Gemini, a radiant time of etheric radiance. The ethers are radiant as we come into the wave of magnetic presence of the Great Ones now momentarily holding humanity in its sight, a moment of initiatory opportunity for humanity, which I think has been being acknowledged and felt here. Um, this initiation is for the planet, including hierarchy, including humanity, some taking the first, some the second, some the third initiation. Hum hierarchy itself also um, at a time of crises. And our entire earth, as we know, becoming sacred, perhaps coming into greater alignment with its higher self, with Venus. And all three are present at this time of Gemini the Earth, and Venus, and then today's focus with Mercury, which creates that bridging presence, the Antakarana itself. And I really appreciate, as you spoke, my getting my thoughts together because, well, it's just been very challenging myself this morning. I felt so fragmented with many puzzle pieces running amok. So I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you. And again, aware of the electrical potencies of these times. The elk and the and the, Electrically speaking, violet, the color violet, the etheric is known to have like violet um, David presence, I guess you would say, reflecting a, 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 a more beautiful violet on buddhic planes. And then the seventh ray is violet. So, so there's that whole presence of making itself known through the use of ultraviolet light. Um, that we are becoming, you know, as part of our terminology these days. I think I was just from reading that um, etheric vision is, as we know, going to come increasingly into play. And I think that will be a big, oh, it's for gene harmony. <clears throat> I'll just say one last thing. Um, about that harmony between opposing perspectives of forces and the need to shift to a higher plane as the soul, as Judy mentioned. Um, and that, I would share the words of a philo the philosophy of my deceased daughter, very poignantly short. She would had it down to drop into the heart, observe, release, Love more, fear less. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Let us continue holding these questions and the topic in our group focus in our group chalice. We will have opportunity to come together again for the quarter moon meeting on June 3rd on the Monday at 6.30 p.m. Universal Time. And then, as always, we'll meet together at the time of the new moon to finalize our sharing and to offer 
seeds for thought forms to flower and inspire humanity in its path towards a brighter future. Thank you again. And uh, I invite uh, if anyone would like to sound a uh, closing mantra for us to close our work today. I can offer the mantra of light. Radiance are we and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the sil silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work, and turn the darkness into day. Oh.